Hi everyone, welcome along to your lunchtime live. So you're joined by myself, Lou, Industry Programs Manager here at Timely, and Daniela Costa, who I've got over on the screen right here, wherever she is. <laughs> Thanks so, for having me. Oh, thank you so much for joining us. I am, um, I'm super excited for today's chat because I, I think the things that we were talking about the other day are going to be such helpful, practical um, tips to help inspire and motivate people on what they can be doing to actually continue to make a bit of revenue through um, a lockdown. So, yes. which has just been you, extended. In yes, Sydney's I know. By four weeks. <laughs> How, how are you feeling? Are you feeling all right? Oh, I'm feeling all right. Probably just a little, you know, sort of get, trying to get my head around it. So, yeah, it yeah. To ride the wave. Yeah. Well, for everyone out there that has that's in the same boat and you're in um, New South Wales, Sydney, this live is for you. And for anyone that's tuning in from elsewhere, the tips that Danielle is going to share with us are going to be relevant to any business that is keen to um, make their, their offerings a little more digital. Um, so yes, please let us know where you're tuning in from. I'll be keeping an eye on the comments and you'll have a chance to have those um, shared with Daniela. And just before we get going, um, for anyone who who hasn't met you before, I just thought I'd give a little bit of an official intro. So Daniela is based in Sydney, so with um, a lot of you over there at the moment, is currently in lockdown. And Daniela is a real industry expert in the space of beauty and specifically brows. She is the owner of her very own salon, Daniela Costa Brows and Beauty. Um, how long has have you had that salon for? Yeah, so in, in October, it will be four years since I've opened the salon. Oh, amazing. Yeah. And I am I right in saying that it's been about 15 years that you've actually been in the industry? Uh, 18. 18. 18. Years. Yes. <laughs> I know. I don't look that old. 18. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So there's a, there's a world of experience, a world of knowledge that we're tapping into today, which is awesome. Um, now, Daniela, I was having a wee bit of a browse into... Um, the, into, into all the things that's been happening with the salon over the last year. And Daniela's salon was also um, a finalist for the beauty services category at the Australian Local Business Awards. So outstanding beauty services category, which is awesome. Um, she has, yeah, so 18 years of experience and that's in um, servicing both men and women in the beauty and brow industry. And so over the past year, Daniela has, really done an incredible job at pivoting her business to deliver um, her products, her services in a online way. And we'll dive into just how she's done that because it's um, it's been really amazing to, to hear Danielle's story. I got the chance of hearing a wee bit of it the other day and just seeing how um, active and motivated you've been, Daniela, at really, you know, pivoting and becoming quite innovative with the situation that we've got in front of us to make sure that you can continue to, to continue to run your business yeah that's right yeah so um things that we're covering today we're just going to be looking into a wee bit about how Daniela um created an online website the whole all, all the bits and pieces of what's involved on you know getting online with your products your services things like that things like um, how you even ship a product, what kind of packaging you get. And then we've got some additional wee uh, tips and tricks about putting together kits that are relevant to um, the situation or the environment that your business is currently in. So yeah, pop the questions through and I'm going to hand over to you, Daniela. Yes. So is there, um, yeah, how, how, first of all, I guess, how have you been um, finding the current lockdown, how like how have you been doing with it all? Yeah, so we are now the start of, well, we're in the middle of week five of lockdown here in New South Wales. Um, this lockdown compared to last definitely feels a little bit different. Um, I think the last lockdown last year, you know, everybody was in the same boat. The whole of Australia was in the same situation. So we could kind of really sort of understand why it was happening and all of that. Mm. Um, whereas this time it seems to be obviously just us here in New South Wales. Mm. Um, obviously Melbourne just had a two-week one, South Australia just had five days. 
Um, but I think, you know, with us, given the numbers that uh, obviously we're getting every day, it was just the frustration of not knowing when the end date was going to be. So I think at the start of lockdown, you know, when we got told it was going to be two weeks, I called every, you know, all my clients that were booked in for that time and rebooked them in. And then the two weeks came and bang, it was extended again. And so as the numbers kept going up, obviously it was just not having that sort of, you know, there was no roadmap or end date as to when this was going to obviously end. Um, so it's a little bit obviously sort of, you know, frustrating, um, but, you know, yeah. it's what it is and we just need to ride the wave and, Obviously, you know, Victorians did it hard last year. And, you know, um, <laughs> oh, yes. As you would know. So this is, um, you know, look, we've done it before. Our last lockdown was 10 weeks. Um, this is probably looking the same, to be honest. So mm. you know, nine, 10 weeks, in, who knows? It might get extended again. We just don't know. Um, yeah. But this time around, I am very grateful that I put into place um, a lot of things, obviously, last lockdown. Yes. So when we did get the news of lockdown, I was already prepared, which yeah. um, that was obviously a big sort of weight off my shoulders because I had done the hard work the previous lockdown. Yeah. And so on that, um, would you mind sharing a few bits and pieces into what, what it was that you did um, through the past year for your business to try it, like... I know there's been some really awesome, there's been a lot that you've actually done, but if you could give people a wee bit of a rundown into where you, where you started and, and what sort of um, things you implemented to yeah. survive. Of course. Um, so firstly, um, obviously last year with the lockdown, I had obviously had a website, um, but I never had an online shop. Um, so the first thing that I did going into the lockdown within, I think, 48 hours, um, I had done an online shop and I did that myself through Shopify and I'm very technically challenged. Um, however, I reached out to, I'm always one to offload things to people because I'm just, you know, in the whole tech world, I'm just not good at it. But um, my web designer said to me, oh, look, it's going to be, you know, it'll probably take me a week to two weeks to get up because I've got so yeah. many clients on at the moment. And it's going to be, I think it was about, you know, 1500 or 2000 it was going to be. Um, mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what, scrap that. Let me let me try and do it myself. Um, I had obviously heard about Shopify and that it was quite user-friendly. And I sort of looked up some YouTube videos. And um, for anybody as well that obviously is in the industry that knows of Tamara Reed um, from Beauty Industry, she also had a video um about sort of you know how to do Shopify and things like that so awesome. I watched that and I watched some other videos and googling and I managed to start up a Shopify um, online shop in 48 um, it was hours very kind of basic Incredible. it was just like I just needed to get something happening yeah um, just to really sort of streamline um, the whole sort of you know ordering process and trying to simplify it for the client and also for myself because those first few days was pretty crazy with you know uh, Instagram DMs texting emailing clients wanting to purchase and it was just obviously having mm. so many different um, platforms where was, people were putting in orders from DMs yeah. and all over very hard to keep on top of yeah that's yeah right. that's right so um I managed to do that, which was great. And the skincare range that I use is O Cosmetics, um, mm -hmm. which is kind of, you know, a pioneer range in the industry. However, it is password protected. So they only um, allow online sales if your website is password protected. So I made sure that Shopify allowed that. Yeah, um, right. Before I obviously did that because I needed to make sure that I was obviously you know, adhering to sort yes. of their, their rules as well. Yeah. Um, so Shopify does have password protection. So for anybody that is in the same boat with, you know, a certain skincare range. Um, mm. yeah, so I got that on board and that worked really well because I could basically just direct, obviously after having consultation with the client and telling them exactly sort of what they needed and things like that, I could direct them to the online shop and then they were just able to sort of purchase through their via sort of PayPal, um, Afterpay as well. I do have Afterpay. Mm, awesome. Um, credit cards, yeah, things like that. So, yeah. yeah um, we'll come. Um, fantastic. I want to come back to the wee point you made just about the online consultations. We'll jump 
back to that a wee bit later. But yeah. um, for anyone out there that is interested in doing that, we'll share a link to the Shopify website so you can have a wee play around. Um, I know that they have a wee trial that you can do to set yourself up. But I think the fact hearing, I, I, I'm sure that others at the moment, um, if they do have a web developer or web designer, they're going to be smashed at the moment with requests to get online from everyone obviously going through the same thing. So it's awesome, awesome to hear the success story where you actually were able to go onto YouTube, teach yourself within, within so one, 48 one hours. I, Amazing. Yeah, one thing I will um, just jump in and say, so I did get my web developer to sort of integrate the Shopify online shop to my website. So that way it has awesome. like a shop now button. I, right. There probably is a way to do it, but I just wasn't sure how to do that at the time. So I reached out to my web developer and she awesome. did that really quickly. So all I had to do was give her the link and then she managed to do it on her end. Nice. That's great. Yeah. yeah brilliant. And then the fact that you had all of the communication for all of your sales in a single point, so that's just perfect to be able to manage that. Yeah. And um so in terms of, I guess, the logistics from there around what did you do first off to market that you were selling online, online. that you had your products available online and especially with O Cosmetics being one that usually is only um, in store. That's yeah. Right. What did you do there? Yeah. So I used obviously my social media platforms, So my Instagram and Facebook to obviously advertise that we had an online shop. Um, I also sent out a email blast uh, via MailChimp. Awesome. Might get to my database, um, introducing them to the online shop. And I did also do a discount um, during the first lockdown for a period of time. Um, I had uh, it was 20% off product and I also did free shipping. Um, which right. Obviously, I, you know, I, I covered the cost for the shipping. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just obviously at that time, you know, it was, this was all before sort of any sort of job keeper or anything like that came, came in board. So everyone was a bit, you know, didn't know sort of mm. um, what was happening. So I did do a 20% off and obviously in that MailChimp email blast um, that had the discount code mm -hmm. and they were able just to click on the shop now button, which then took them to my online site. Beautiful. And then yeah. they just enter the discount code in Shopify and it all automatically Correct. sorts it. Amazing. Yeah. That's right. Um, with the with the promotion that you did on socials, did you do anything in particular there? Like, did you do just um, posts and a few stories around promoting? Yeah, I pretty much just did posts and, yeah, and stories. Um, I got behind, obviously, the stories as well. So, you know, my clients could... Um, see that sort of you know personal um touch as well from me awesome um which was great because I think that's really important to connect with your clients um to show them that you know we're still here and you know we want to help them um mm. and we we're really lucky to have such great support from our clients that they wanted to support you know my small business and you know that they, they understand that you know I have a family and and things like that so we had a really great response um, from our clients want, wanting to help any way they could, whether it be buying a gift voucher that they could use mm. afterwards or, you know, stocking up on their skincare range. So I know that um, from the previous time when we had the conversation where you talked a lot about how the importance of staying present yes. with your clients. And I think that that's something that you have done so well of um, not just last year, but in this current lockdown as well. Yeah. Um, and that's something, uh, the things that I've seen, I've seen that there was the, the bracket that was brought back, yes. the at-home bracket. Um, and I also recently saw that you also did the wellness kit for your staff, which was just gorgeous. Yeah. So uh, those, some of those offerings, were they created specifically for, um, you lockdown. know, your salon being locked down? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so the brow kits um, last year were brought out purely because we were in lockdown and obviously, you know, clients um, couldn't do their, you know, couldn't come to see us for their brows, but I still wanted them to have a solution, um, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to maintain their brows at home. So I created these brow maintenance and styling kits, which included tweezers, um, little trimming scissors, 
um, little measuring sticks, a brow styling um, product, and mm -hmm. alcohol wipes in a beautiful little bag. Um, and then I also did a tutorial. So awesome. I, filmed, Amazing. Yes, I filmed, yeah, I filmed myself live doing a tutorial of exactly how to do it, you know, brushing up the brow, trimming, measuring and marking, you know, where the brow should sort of end and uh, where the art should be. Mm. All of that. And then, um, yeah, they sold really well. Um, I decided not to, I mean, some other places put tints in and were selling eyebrow tints. I, I decided to not do that yeah. um, purely for also sort of insurance purposes. Um, you need to make sure, you know, that you really know what you can do because sort of, you know, um, giving them stuff that's got peroxide and things like that. So yeah. I decided to stay away from the tinting and provide them with a brow styling product, which they can continue to use all the time. Amazing. Yeah. And then it obviously brings them back. They've got that need to actually come back to have the full service with you. Correct. Exactly right. I didn't want, um, you know, for them to go, oh, well, I can go and buy a tint from such and such and now do it myself at home. I mean, I know it's never the same. Obviously, it's like making a coffee yourself at home and going to getting a barista coffee. It's different. But that was the approach that I took. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, future there's proofing. No right, there's no right or wrong. It was what I decided to that, to do that worked with my business model and my. I wanted it to align with you know how. Yeah. 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 And it sounds like there were quite a few reasons for that. Not only obviously are they going to be more um, a bit maybe a bit more of a rush to get back. Yeah. But the fact that you also were making sure that the um, what you were teaching them to do was going to be super safe at home. Correct. And like really minimal of mistakes, that, which is awesome. And then they're going to feel happy and um, right. satisfied with the with the outcome of the products that they've purchased. Exactly. So I would hate to for someone to have you know an allergic reaction to mm. you know a, a, something like that. So yeah. absolutely, yeah, yeah, awesome. So I did and, I did the brow kits, and obviously I brought them back again this year, and they've been super popular again, um, which is great. And I just really did a lot of, um, uh, you know, I, I made up different kits, um, skincare kits, you know, ones that had masks in there with a mask brush and a beautiful headband, which I'm about to release again. Oh, great. Um, awesome. Yeah, so they were always, like, they were sort of put together in beautiful boxes and um, same thing, I did a little sort of video of, a, like, a DIY facial at home and included those products, or they could also sort of swap out and change um, some things as well. Like their hydrator could be swapped to something different. But it was just really trying to sort of pivot and change and, you know, the way we do things. Um, and also I wanted to be able to give some sort of a saving to my clients as well. So by packaging things up, um, you know, I, had, I was able to be a bit flexible and sort of, mm. yeah, create an awesome offer. I've just actually shared the link to the bracket that you've got so people can see how cute it is all packaged up yep um and I think one of the brilliant things that you did here was these weren't your regular offerings like I know there was that well the maybe the wellness kit um which yeah, were no, yeah, yeah none, of, none of them were I, I never offered them I never offered any of them before so this was all purely um done for lockdown and once again the I forgot to mention are uh, the nail removal kits. Yes, yes, that's right. So as we spoke the other day, I actually don't even offer nails in my business. Uh, we don't do manis, we don't do petties, no SNS, nothing like that. But I saw that there was a gap in the market, um, and it was in that first week. I think I did those, um, or maybe the yeah the first week or ten days. I think it was that yeah. I created um, removal kits, which, you know, had acetone, cotton balls, foil, um, a beautiful cuticle strengthening oil, um, nail buffer files. And, yeah, they went pretty crazy as well. Probably sold maybe around, oh, I think it was about 50. Mm, um, awesome. Yeah, in that short period of time because you know, people knew that they couldn't get their nails done. How are we going to remove it? And at that time as well, we were, it wasn't just a two-week lockdown. It was kind of 
indefinite, not indefinite, but it was going to be long. Yeah, the uncertainty of how long it was going to be. And I just, I think on that, it's really that um, almost giving yourself that creative license to go, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to think outside of the box of what I, my usual offerings even are here because what do people need yes. and what am I going to be able to provide them with and through that way of thinking actually thinking a little bit outside of what you usually are doing you've created an offering that people through specifically being in lockdown they need yes. they absolutely need it and that that is just brilliant absolutely brilliant yeah. and how about when it came to all of the um so, so you've got you've you've got all the products. Um, did you take them? Have you taken them home with you? And what did you do around the whole pa like packaging and branding and things like this for, for organizing that side of it? Yeah. So, um, I did end up bringing all the products home last lockdown and this lockdown after the after our two weeks. Um, the first two weeks, I was going back to the salon sort of every second day and fulfilling the orders there. I'll grab mm -hmm. them. Um, then obviously when it got extended, I decided to bring everything home with me. Um, mm -hmm. So I've set that up in my spare room. Great. My little retail <laughs> retail shelf. Um, and what I do now is I use a company called Sendal, mm -hmm. um, which is really cost effective, and really convenient. So it's like a, a third party um, delivery service. So they actually work with the likes of like Star Trek and, you know, Direct Freight and TNT and stuff like that. So um, you just create a account with them online. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, and it also integrates, um, which is what I love about it. It integrates with my Shopify amazing i'm going so, to share the links of these two right now so anyone that after them can grab them yeah awesome so for um like sydney sort of cbd um and even melbourne so sydney sort of metro um it's about six dollars and five cents a parcel um yeah and that's picked up by a courier from my house every morning um, which then obviously, and it usually most people get it within one to two days. Some people get it same day. Um, Amazing. It's, awesome. It's Australia wide as well. So um, I've got some clients in Melbourne. Um, obviously it costs a little bit more. I think it might be about like the $7.95 maybe, but it is a lot more cheaper than Australia Post. Mm -hmm. And the fact that um, I can, you know, when my orders come through, I can pack and know that the, um, is going to come the next morning opposed to me missing the Australia Post and having to go Australia Post how many times a day you know yeah 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 amazing and also I mean helpful for helping you keep quite safe through this time as well Correct. the fact that they can show up and that it's I mean it saves you time and it's obviously saving you a bit of money there as well which is awesome exactly. and if those sales start to ramp up that few dollars on everyone is brilliant yes um and it means that I can I mean, at the moment now, I am doing free shipping, um, but sometimes I will, you know, take the free shipping off and it's instead of like $10.95 or $12.95 that, you know, we're so used to paying, yes. I charge the client $5.95. So yeah, awesome. that's a lot more um, affordable for them as well. Um, that is, yeah, that's brilliant. I feel like these sort of things can be quite hard to navigate when you're first breaking into the space, understanding where do I even, who do I even go to for shipping? Do they come to me? Do I go to them? That's right. Um, so these little tips are awesome. I've just shared that link to Sendal and Shopify. Yeah. And um, what I do, sorry, oh, what I do, yeah, please. Little, so yeah, so basically it integrates with my Shopify. So say it'll say, you know, Daniela Costa, um, and then I'll just go send parcel and my, my address and everything like that will come up. And then a uh, barcode gets um, created created, and I just print it. Now, I don't have a Perfect. labeler at home. I just print it on normal paper and I stick it on to my um, bags. Now, the bags that I use are just white satchel bags, like an mm -hmm. A4 size, which I purchased from eBay, which work out to be about 10 cents each. So good. Yeah. So good. So, and so those me. are the ones that you're, that you're shipping everything with. So, brilliant. Yeah. 
<laughs> I do have one, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So I, I think what maybe we'll do after this as well, because I know there are quite a few tidbits um, that we're covering. Yeah. What we'll do is create a bit of a checklist so that people can um, use some of these these ideas and these resources to get set up themselves. That it's yeah. brilliant, brilliant advice. And um, jumping back onto so when you mentioned around the virtual consultations. So let's say you've got um, someone new who's found you on socials through the marketing that you've done, mm -hmm. and they reach out saying that they'd like to purchase some products. What would be, yeah, what's the process that you do there and how have you been managing those virtual consultations? Okay, so yeah, with the virtual consultations, we either set up a FaceTime uh, meeting so we can obviously communicate through there. I can see their skin. I obviously ask them all the questions like I would if they were on my treatment bed um, mm. about their skin, obviously their concerns, their diet, you know, medications, what they're currently using, what they've used in the past. So, you know, the consultation is just as, you know, the same as if they were on the treatment bed, um, but it's obviously mm. done virtually. Um, then I will also usually get them, um, obviously sometimes the, the quality of the, the FaceTime or Zoom you know, in regards to their skin, yeah. I actually get them also to send me photos, um, makeup free in a natural light. Great. Um, and then obviously after, I normally get them to send me that before. Um, mm -hmm. And then we obviously go through the virtual consult. Um, and then I prescribe from that. Brilliant. So in that prescription, I normally um, either send them a text message with everything or I'll create a document where I'll give them the proper prescription. So, you know, morning, cleanse, correct, eyes, hydrate, protect, um, everything's sort of written that way and then they'll, mm -hmm. they'll email that through or I'll print it out and I'll include that in with their order once they've ordered the products. Awesome. Love it. And something um, just to note on that for anyone that is using Timely, I know that a few people have started using the, we do have the option for virtual consultation or virtual services. So if you would, if you are feeling like you're getting a bit of an influx of requests for these, you can set that up at the same as you would do a, um, like a booking in the salon, but it's a virtual booking. And then that automatically will send a link to, let's say a Zoom, um, where you can have that virtual consultation. Oh, so that's amazing. That's something yeah, yeah, like that's okay. <laughs> normally I just, yeah, normally I'll just get their, phone number but obviously last year I don't think Timely had that available so that's good to know no. that it does yeah not yeah it was um it came out of definitely came out of the need for doing taking things a little bit more virtual um yeah. and watching all like watching a few of you in the industry start to pivot that way we were like okay this is where we need to go yeah so um yeah that's that one now I had one question on the tip of my tongue for you and I've lost it I'm sure oh yes with virtual consultations, did, did you charge, do you charge for those? Look, I, at the moment, no. Um, last year I was charging only $19. Um, mm -hmm. And then that $19 obviously was redeemable on product. Mm -hmm. um, just purely because right. it was my time. But also, also given, you know, the situation that we're in, um, at the moment now I'm offering it as a, a sort of a, a complimentary service, yeah. And also it's not just uh, for new clients, a lot of my clients that sort of need their, you know, their routine tweaked a little bit or obviously their yeah. skin's changing, winter, stress, you know, all the mask wearing. So it's also for existing clients too. Mm, awesome yeah. and and that I mean that away that way as well if you're doing those for existing clients such a nice way to be able to stay connected to them through this time nice. making them feel like they've still got that relationship and they'll be even more excited I'm sure to come and see you yeah when they when and, they get out the other side and look there is some people that obviously prefer not to do the whole sort of FaceTime which is fine I will then just make the phone call and ask them all the questions via the phone and then they'll send me through the photos so yeah, I put great. both ways depending on you know what the what the client feels comfortable with as well yeah awesome um and talking about I know obviously you've created a bunch of these kits the the nail kits the eyebrow kits the wellness kits for um for sale and we had a question that came through yes. uh from someone asking from Jess asking if you sell these on if you actually at those kits that you're selling online yes um yes correct and 
on, as well as that, obviously separate to being the offering for your clients, but the ones that you created for your staff recently, yes. I stumbled across those, I think on a story you put up on Instagram. Um, what did, can you tell us a wee bit about what you did there? Cause that was just the most gorgeous um, offering to see. Thank you. Oh my God. My lighting's really bad here. I think. Oh no, um, you're great. Sorry. Okay. So yeah, look, during uh, last week, I just really wanted my team to know, you know, that I am thinking about them and, you know, obviously that we're in this together and for them to feel that, you know, I am obviously still here and how much I appreciate them and, and miss them as well. So, and just something to sort of put a smile on their face, you know, because as a business owner, obviously like without our team, you know, they are really sort of, you know, they, they create our team and um, they really help us obviously into with so much so I just wanted them to sort of feel appreciated and bring a bit of a smile to their face um so I created um a beautiful box and I called it like an ISO survival wellness yes. box um and in that I had um had a few bits and pieces I had a beautiful um silk uh like a dressing gown robe Oh, lush. Um, nice. Yes. Um, I had a, I got a beautiful Chanel um, mirror. Um, Gorgeous. Yeah, a little Chanel mirror. Um, some teas. Um, yeah. A beautiful mug. A gorgeous marble coaster. Um, some chocolate. Um, some muesli bars. Um, a beautiful aromatherapy um, balm that they can sort of use to help relieve stress. Mm. and a visa gift card as well so mm. um, amazing obviously you know help them sort of you know with those you know groceries and bits and pieces and things like that um that will sort of assist them because obviously during this time you know the money that is given from the government like even though obviously mm. we're so grateful but you know for a lot of people that's not really much when you're trying yeah. to you know feed a family and pay rent and things like that so oh, yeah if I could sort of just help that a little bit. Um, and also a, a full-size um, product um, from O Cosmetics, which is one of their new products that they released. And I wanted the yeah. girls to try it for themselves. So awesome. That too. Yeah. And then they can obviously talk to that so much more comfortably when it comes to selling that product to clients as well. That's right. Yeah. Oh, I just think it's such a, it's, you know, um, at the moment for, for times like these, it's such a special thing being able to receive an actual package at the door. Yeah. It gives so much, it sparks so much and joy were, in people. So, yeah, they were so appreciative and, you know, they just, it brought a smile to their face and they just, you know, loved it. And, um, you know, just yeah. as much as I loved creating it for them. So I'm glad yeah. that it got received, you know, well. Absolutely. And I, I think um, it seems to be a thing. I mean, it's definitely a theme that keeps coming up time and time again, the importance of making sure that you stay connected to your staff as well as staying connected to your clients. Correct, and yeah. through doing something like that is such a, you know, such a lovely way to show your support, show that you're there for them, that you're thinking yeah. of them, that you're in this together to give a bit of that um, community feel and same for your clients. And um the way that I saw the content that was created through these, you know, these wellness kits, I'm sure that you've had clients do the same. Yeah. When people get excited, they receive their products, their gift pack, whatever it is, That's taking right. that content. And then all of a sudden you've got um, content, even though you're not in salon, you're not with people, content Correct. for your socials, which is yeah. awesome. Exactly. Yeah. So same thing um, with a lot of my online orders. Um, it, you know, I have been including a beautiful cookie, um, I just, I ran out, but yeah, it's, uh, it's got my own branded, um, cookie. So it's got Daniela Costa Brows and Beauty, which gets included into their parcel with a beautiful thank you, um, card. That's mm. me. one second. I'm going to. Yeah, please. <laughs> Yeah, so I got my um, my graphic designer to make up these cards. Oh, awesome. Um, so it's kind right. of the silhouette of the woman's face. It's got thank you. And at the back, I hand write. I didn't want it just a generic one for everybody. I really wanted to create an area on it that is blank so I could, you know, 
Please say to Lou, thank you for your order and your support. Stay safe. Mm. Um, and that gets included in everyone's order as well. Oh, amazing. Honestly, I think it's those touches, like something like personalized cookie that they're not expecting yeah. and having a handwritten message and being like, the, it really creates that connection between the buyer and the seller. You know, the fact that yeah. you are actually a real person that has handwritten right, myself yeah. a note with my name. Yeah. Like there's no better way to um foster that connection between yourself and your clients yeah. and I think um that in turn is is really going to help with that client loyalty and bringing them back to actually come and meet you or see you um yeah. again when things open so yeah awesome 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 um I am just going to check our we if anyone has any final questions for Daniela please pop them through there's a wee question in there from Chelsea um, about Timely and the virtual the virtual services. So I'll reply to you after yeah. our live on that one. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, and if any, anyone, yeah, if anyone has obviously you know wants to reach out to me personally via Facebook, please do. I'm happy to help. Um, you know, I was helping another business owner with sort of you know the online and the Shopify and stuff like that. So if I can be of any help to anybody, I'm very more than happy to give my oh, assistance. Thank right you. Then. Oh, that's so generous uh, of you. Thank you so much. But I think I'll, it's um, just, yeah, I think the main thing from this is just, you like I said, thinking outside the box, um, really, you know, like I said, even if you don't offer nails, you know, and things like that. And also keeping, um, you know, even after these lockdowns, you know, making it still available that, you know, our online shop is still there. Admittedly, um, you know, our online sales obviously did drop quite a lot once we reopened because mm -hmm. most of our clients come in and purchase. Um, but having it there is great that it's still obviously available to them. Um, and, yeah, I think it's just really being present in your social media, you know, try to get on your stories or, you know, keep posting um, just to keep, you know, fresh in people's minds because that's really important as well, you know. Um, I'll yeah. be sending out a... Um, an email blast as well to all my clients this week um, just letting them know that we're thinking of them and you know once again that we've got the online shop that we're doing the consultation so if anyone needs any assistance so we'll, I'll be doing that this week as well amazing yeah I've just shared the link through to your um, Instagram and your Facebook page so if people would like to connect Perfect. Please um, jump on there. We've just had a few quick questions come through just before yep. we wrap up. Yep. So um, Francesca's just asked about how did you send the tutorials to your clients on how to use the product? So where did you, um, once you did the tutorial, where did you put that? I did an Instagram IGTV. Awesome. Um, and I put that up on my Instagram. So they can actually still go back and watch that. So I've done sort of, I did one with our Gemma Roller. Mm -hmm. um, after I did that, yeah, our Gemma Roller's sales skyrocketed. And I think right. it was really important during the lockdown because it can really take our skin to the next level. So, yeah, I didn't, I didn't do, like send it personally or just to the people that purchased. I made it available to everybody to view. Um, and then, yeah. And then in turn, sales, I'm sure, come through from actually seeing that as well. Right, exactly. Um, did you share that? Did you just let people know where they could find that after, if once they'd purchased? Like, let people yeah, know well, that. Most, most people actually saw the live first. Saw and then, obviously, yeah, right. saw the IGTV and then purchased. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So then you're so exactly where to go so for I that. Actually, yeah, so I, I'm pretty sure from memory last year, I, I released the IGTV. And then straight after, and I'd said to them that it was available on the website and then I mm -hmm. uploaded it straight away afterwards. Awesome. Yeah, great. Brilliant. Well, that is us coming up to a wrap on our live. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in today. It's really awesome to be able to connect with you all um, virtually while we're, you know, we're stuck at home Melbourne Victoria get is out today which yes. is nice but I'm thinking of all of you over in Sydney and Daniela I can't thank you enough for coming on and sharing Thanks all of uh, uh, it's just it's so so valuable and myself and the community are so grateful to the fact that you've been open to coming on and sharing 
all of the learnings that you have um, gone through the hard yards to gain over the yeah. past year. Yeah, it's, it's really, really motivating and inspiring to hear. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Any final words from you to um, the community? Um, just hang in there. We've done it before. We can do it again. Um, it's normal to totally feel like you're curled up in a ball. We all have those moments. <laughs> but just remember, that was probably me last week. <laughs> um, but just remember, you know, we have done it before. We can get through it. And if you just believe in yourself, um, you know, obviously, and just show show your, you know, your staff, your clients that you are there for them. Um, and, you know, that's that's all we can sort of really do. And yeah. just get, just think outside the box, pivot as much as you can. I've just gone and ordered a whole heap of headbands and mask brushes. Yes. Ready. <laughs> yeah ready to make up my boxes Amazing. So they, they'll probably be coming in the next few days um yeah so obviously now that we're in this for another four weeks I just think my mind's just been you know going and you know to see what that next step is going to be oh we'll definitely be keeping an eye on <laughs> um what's coming but that's awesome yeah thanks so much everyone thank you Daniela thank you. and we'll see you soon okay bye, bye.